Hey there, I'm Aristotle Daskal, founder of GoStartup.io, and today, in this video, I want to talk to you about daily stand-ups. So daily stand-ups are a really popular um, habit, a really popular type of meeting that happens in agile development teams. Um, it's part of the Scrum methodology, and it's very popular within any nowadays tech startups and um agencies, basically any team that does software development. And I want to explain a little bit to you how to do daily stand-ups the right way. What is the difference between how some companies do it and how other top performing teams do it and why they do it that way. And maybe break some um, maybe break some false beliefs out there and explain a little bit why those need to be broken. So uh, I'm going to share a little bit a whiteboard here. So what is daily stand-ups all about? Mainly daily stand-ups is a meeting that should be about 10 minutes long um, and it should contain all the development team if the development team is under about seven people. If they're more than that, it should be broken into two different teams. The rule of thumb says that if you you have to be able to feed the entire team with two pizzas. So I don't know how much they eat, but usually the norm is maximum of seven people in a in a stand up team. Again, if development team is bigger than that, you can ju definitely just break it into two separate teams. Even if they work on the same project, they should have at that point uh, two separate scrum masters. Scrum Master is a, uh, is a role within the development team, or better said, within this, uh, the Scrum Agile methodology, and is a person that is um, moderating these daily stand-up meetings, these 10 minutes meetings, making sure that everyone from the team answers these three questions that I'm going to show you soon. Um, but the Scrum Master doesn't necessarily have to be a separate role, doesn't have to be necessarily a project manager or somebody else, an engineering manager, they can just be one of the developers, one of the team members. They can be one of the testers. They can be one of the team members and just simply rotate them. Um, simply rotate and every day somebody else can be the scrum master. Definitely that's the person that is responsible on making sure that it happens, that the right information is being written down, is being logged, and make sure that everything is being put out in the open. Um, so... Let's get started with uh, with these three questions that are part of the daily stand-up. So in the daily stand-ups, there are three main questions that are being answered. Um, question number one is, question number one uh, being, uh, what did you do? What did you do yesterday? Question number two is, what will you do today? And question number three is, what do you need? Or um, are you stuck? These are basically the main three answer, uh, the main three questions that, uh, as part of daily stand-ups, the Scrum Master is asking the, the development team. That's it. Three questions, everybody needs to answer them, and that's it. Now, what is the big difference between uh, between teams? Now, I want to start with this one because it's the most important things when it comes to daily stand-ups. So most of the most of the teams, well, maybe they're not running their projects agile, or even if they are running their projects agile, they just focus on, yeah, what what did you do yesterday? Uh, what are you gonna be working on today? It, it's it's more like a casual type question. Um, and in the in the agile um, in the agile core principles in the in the main scrum best practices, everybody knows that the answer to the question, what are you gonna be working on today? It should be a commitment. It's not gonna just be well this is kind of what I'm going to be working today. I'm going to build that, uh, that function for that feature and I'm going to, or I'm going to fix those bugs or, and, and be, you know, ambiguous on the deliverable in itself and just say what you're going to be trying to work. So the, the biggest difference that is from a team that runs, um, 
daily stand-ups properly and a team that is just an amateur on running daily stand-ups is to really make the developers commit to what they're going to be working today. What that means is that the developer, when they're going to be, when the day starts and they're going to be working on, they're not going to think, well, I don't know. I mean, I think that's how much it's going to take. I think this is how much I'm going to be working with. You know, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And that's kind of it. So the, the really, the best, most solid teams uh, help developers to see the daily standups as a commitment. You will do this. You commit that you will get this done. Now, how can you do that without seeing um, um, my, uh, that you're micromanaging the developers or that, uh, or that you're forcing them to stay over time or something like that, right? How, how can you do that in a way that actually seems uh, pleasant to the developers, that they're on board with taking this approach? Well, the thing is that you have to, you have to allow the developers to tell you exactly what they need in order to do that. You have to be very explicit to, um, to what those tasks need to be contained in them, and you have to ask them very specifically if there's anything that they need in order to achieve that and what could possibly block them from doing. They have to be very upfront so that this way they can speak up and say, well, only in case that this shows up, then I would probably not be able to do it. Now, why is this commitment good for the developers as well? It's because during the day, the developers, just like managers, just like founders, just like anybody else in the team, they get distracted from the day-to-day -day things. They just start getting questions and, and helping others and working on different things. And then the main core things that they committed to be doing, they realized that they didn't do it. Now, what is that thing that allows them to really focus and see the importance of getting those things done and not looking like, well, tomorrow is day two. And that is having a very good backlogging place and a sprint planning, sprint planning done so that they can see beyond today what is this day in the context of the timeline, in the context of the release, in the, t in, in the context of what do we need to do over the next few days, weeks, months, and specific release dates, specific milestones they need to be achieved so that they see that if they do not do what they committed to, that's going to cascade and is going to delay a bunch of other stuff. They never, nobody ever wants to be the person because of whom the plans are being delayed. So they, in that situation, they will do their best to come back and really get their stuff done. Now, of course, there's sometimes there, there are real situations when something really important, unexpected happened. Yeah, that's understandable. But that's exactly what, what you're trying. That's not the, the, um, that's not the purpose of the commitment in itself. It's more to be focused and see it like, hey, I say I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Why are you able to ask that? from the developers because all the tasks that they're working on, they have been or should have been previously estimated. So just like we said, you do have a roadmap that has to be in place, a sprint planning that shows what needs to be done over the next two weeks, uh, a release planning that tells them what dates, in what day this feature that they're working on right now should be released. And also, um, also, they need to really understand how is this affecting, uh, how is this affecting their day-to-day uh, -day work. And the estimations have been done in, the, uh, in previous meetings, in the spring planning meeting, when they saw everything that needs to be done throughout these next two weeks. And now they know these things that I'm going to be working on today, I will do it today because my assumption is that this is how long it should take me to do these features. And I, I said that. Me together with the other developers, I put my hand up and I said, yes, I agree. This is how long it's going to take me. So that's another prerequisite that proper sprint planning happen when these tasks have already been estimated. Now, with this in mind, there's no surprise. They shouldn't be able to say, oh, well, you know, it took me way longer than that. Well, Why? In the sprint planning, we discussed what are the features, what are the exact requirements, what are the technical implications, what are the surprises that we could expect. So there should not be any unknown. 
if it is, it should be completely exceptional that things like that should happen. Other than that, it should simply be team communication or real productivity. So that's why they will get more focused and will they will take responsibility and they realize that it's only on them to get it done within the committed time frame. It's 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 fair for you to expect that from them because they estimated it, they knew what this is about, they signed off on the fact that the task contains all the information that they need to start developing. Cool? So that's why it's it's great. Of course, as a manager, you got to make sure that everybody does and make sure that everybody has done um, what what was needed as an input for this to happen. All those meetings that we talked about, all the task description, all that. Okay, so uh, that's the most important thing, the commitment in itself. Okay. So commitment, that's the number one. Okay, number two. Uh, Number two is that in order to see a trend and to see in time the productivity of your team and see, well, does John or does Mary or does Michael, do they tend to do what they said that it will be doing? It's very important at that point to really track and have a log of this is the status. This is what say that they will do. And this is what actually happened. So you have to have a way to track and easily see on, on a daily basis, what did they say that they will work on and what did they actually work on? It's not enough to just say, um, this is what they did. And you just look into Jira and see, yeah, these are all the ties that have been assigned to them. Jira being the most popular software development task tracking tool. Um, it, it, that's not enough. You have to have a way to map what happened yesterday to what uh, to the status that you're receiving today and see a trend, see like a report in time of how did that go? Like, do the developers uh, build whatever they commit to be doing? Is, is, is there an issue further than that that tends to happen uh, maybe with certain developers? What, what's going on over there? So you need to have this, um, this log. Number two is having this log. Now, number three, and this is beyond development team. Uh, and this is, I think, one of my favorite. Um, now, development teams, I would say that they're one of the most, if not the most, organized and structured team from a tech startup. And why is that? Exactly because of this. Because they have sprint plannings, because, um, because they have long-term broken down into middle-term, broken down into short-term um, work that needs to be performed, because they have a lot of input, it's very clear, they estimate what needs to be done, they have tam- it, it, It's an amazing, it's completely organized if you're running properly agile in Scrum, obviously. Um, Now, the amazing thing is that you can translate this and bring this agile Scrum methodology, um, agile, in a separate video, uh, I've talked about it, agile being a set of best practices and Scrum being the methodology itself with all these concepts of meetings and uh, how are the tasks called, uh, tasks called and estimations and story points and all those things. Now, you can bring this agile Scrum into all the other departments in your company. That means that it's not just your development team, but you can build it and bring it into the support team. You can bring it into the sales team. You can build it in, you can bring it into logistics. If, if you have logistics part of it, you can bring it into uh, leadership. Leadership team. Um, that means that over there, you will have the longer term planning, the midterm planning, the short term planning. You will have based on based on those you are going to start running daily stand-ups which is going to start answering exactly the same three questions what did you do yesterday what will you be doing today what do you need where are you stuck 
Now, going back to the to this log that we've talked about, that in the case of developers in maybe in Jira, but you have to modify Jira somehow to see that, or maybe in any other tool that you want, in the same way, um, across the other departments, you may need um, other tools. Let's say that your um, let's say that your sales team is using Salesforce or is using whatever other tools for tracking sales. In the daily standup, you should be able to see, okay, what did they say that they will be doing and what did they did and be able to look at the numbers that show exactly what they committed to and what they said that they will be doing, the targets and the actuals. The leadership team in the same way. Probably they have all these reports for the entire team, for the entire logistics team, for the entire uh, support team. And, and they will be able to come and say, yeah, yesterday I um, had to, I don't know, have these new processes built, says the, uh, the support um, director or something like that. So you can bring everything that is about daily stand-ups from the development team into the other departments. Yeah, I think that this, uh, this is pretty much everything that I wanted to, uh, to talk to you guys. And this makes an amazing difference. If you look at the daily stand-ups like this, it's not just, oh, let's have a huddle of 10 minutes and we just see that everybody's working on something. No, if you go with everybody's working on something, that's, and it's not linked to, to the higher goals, it's not, it's not being tracked to see if there's a tendency of, of getting done what you said that they're going to be done, then it's... it's it's just, you know, I'm, I'm not completely off. It's kind of like that, right? You, you really need to be very specific. I hope these tools are going to help you. Now, if you don't know exactly how to implement these, these are important tools to implement or any of the other concepts that we've talked about, like the agile scrum concepts, like the sprint planning and the backlog grooming and uh, an estimation and doing proper estimation or training your scrum master to be able to run this. If you need any help with that, you should find a link in this video, uh, in the description of this video or below on this video page. Feel free to book a call and we're going to take a look at exactly what your situation is right now. Where are you? Where you want to get? And if we can help you, we're going to tell you how that looks like and uh, feel free to book a call so that we can take it from there. Thank you very much and I hope that this has helped you. Have a great day.